perks. If you played a Fallout game, chances are you have seen perks. They've been a staple of the Fallout series since Fallout was even a staple of its own series. And today, we're going to be talking about the perk system in Fallout 76 as I think it is very fatally flawed compared to the other perk systems in the previous Fallout games. Not only are we going to be critiquing it, we're going to be constructively criticizing it. I'm not necessarily here today to call it garbage, I'm going to instead give recommendations on how I would improve upon it. Before we get too deep into the video, let's talk about how Fallout 76's perk system currently works. So right now, if you have 15 points in strength, for example, and you wanted to equip a 3 star perk, that is going to be equal to 3 points. After you equip that perk, you will have about roughly 12 left. Which sounds really good on paper, but in practice, it's honestly kind of gotten a little old. We've had this for 4 years straight, and honestly, I'm kind of starting to get tired of it. Now take a look at the perks that I use. There really isn't anything wrong, per se, with this. The only problem I have with it comes down to perception. If you'll look in my perception, I have Tank Killer, Concentrated Fire, Grenadier, Master Commando, Commando, and Expert Commando. But here's the thing. Expert Commando, Commando, and Master Commando relate to automatic rifles. But what if I wanted to use semi-automatic rifles? Well, instead, I'd have to have Rifleman, Expert Rifleman, and Master Rifleman. Once again, that sounds really simple. But wait, there's more. What if I wanted to have them at the same time? Well, Fallout 76 says no. Like, is, is a rifle not a rifle anymore? Like, I can't have both at the same time? And that is where the biggest problem and the main reason why I'm making today's video. In previous Fallout games, what you would try to do is you would try to pick the weapons that you want to use at the start of the game and then try to build your character around that. And once again, Fallout 76 actually does that pretty well. If you want to use rifles, there's a lot of rifle perks. If you want to use pistols, there's a lot of pistol perks. If you want to use melee, heavy guns, you want to use anything, there's going to be a lot of perks for it. But, once again, back to my rifleman example, you just don't have enough points to really put all of the perks on at once. You could do a rifle build, but not even have enough points to have every rifle perk in the game, which is kind of baffling. Another reason why I don't like this system also comes down to using other weapons at the same time. Very often, and if you're a new player, you have probably heard this before, whenever you play Fallout 76, pick a type of weapon and stick to it. If you're using melee, there is no circumstance where you'd ever want to use a rifle, because you would be at such a disadvantage to do so. I mean, what happened to Fallout 1, 2, 3, New Vegas, 4, where you literally can have you can have any weapon you want at any time in the game. You start out pretty weak, but the, the enemies scale with you. And they do the same thing in Fallout 76. But in Fallout 76, you'll reach a point to where you can't just do that anymore. What if you wanted to have a rifle, a shotgun, and a pistol? Well, you would have to put a lot of points into strength, perception, and agility. And to be honest, it's not really worth it as pistols are, well, kind of underpowered. And shotguns... They're in strength, and that is another problem I have with Fallout 76. Most of the strength perks that I use correspond to carry weight, as everything in Fallout 76 weighs an absolute metric ton. Taking another look at the perks that I usually use in Fallout 76, a lot of my strength perks, well actually in this example here, all of my strength perks are corresponding to carry weight. Those are perks that I absolutely have to have. Alright, maybe I don't need Ordnance Express. I don't always carry mini nukes and things. Maybe I don't really need Pack Rat. I have Fallout first, I could put down a survival tent. But Bandolier Traveling Pharmacy and Strong Back, that takes up 9 points. I need those. I can't play Fallout 76 without them. Bullets are really heavy. Stim Packs are really heavy. And Strong Back. I mean, maybe I could take it off, but it does give you 40 extra carry weight. Once again, that's kind of, eh. You could do what you can with that one. I would always recommend leaving it on, but that one also, you could probably technically get rid of that one. But the other two, you have to have, which is guaranteed, 5 points, which will leave you with 10. 
if you want to have shotguns, well, there are enough perks to where you would need more than 10. The regular shotgun perks come in three points each per perk, shotgunner, expert shotgunner, master shotgunner, but if you want to have scatter shot and some of those other ones, you're going to need more and you just won't have enough space. So now let's answer the question, why is it a bad thing that you can only use one weapon type at a time in Fallout 76 and also be severely crippled while using it? For starters, it makes the gameplay feel samey, I guess. I mean, if you could only use heavy guns and you kind of wanted to use something else, for example, let's say, just like in Fallout 3, you can have a minigun, a rifle, and a shotgun. The game won't tell you no. You can do whatever the heck you want. Fallout 4, you want to use a pistol and a fat man? Go right ahead. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. What about, uh having one of each weapon type in the game. Once again, in the other games, you could do that, but in Fallout 76, you cannot effectively use every single weapon type at the same time. And okay, that's not the end of the world, that's not the worst thing, but I still think you should be able to use more than one effectively. The game doesn't really kind of let you do that. The next problem I have with perks is the hierarchy of in which you'd want to use them. There are just simply better perks, and the ones that aren't really that great are never going to get used. Not every perk is for everybody, uh, different playstyles do use different perks, that is still fair. If you're going to use a stealth build, you're probably going to look nothing like the build that I use. But, at the same time, you can still only have so many perks. And tell me, if you do a stealth build, are you able to use every single perk in the game that you wish you could actually use? Or can you actually have all of the perks that you wish you could have? Because personally, I don't think so. If you do think so, well, I'm shocked. Personally, there has not been a single build that I've made in this game where I was like, dude, I totally have enough perks. I've never felt that way. I've always wanted more perks, and I'm not greedy. It's just that if you're going to give me perks, at least let me to use them. Back to the, what I was saying earlier, you can only have so many perks, meaning you have to prioritize. The perks that are just kinda eh, or mediocre, you're not gonna use, no one uses them. And I could give you a long list of perks that no one uses. So let's actually do that. But instead of making it a long list, we're gonna make it a short list. Let's start with Junk Shield. No one uses that, okay? No one ever uses that. Pain Train, Awareness, perks like that, especially Wrecking Ball. That perks, you can't even use it. So really, there's a lot of perks that you just, you're not going to use because not only are you limited on how many perks you can have, they're just not really helpful. So now I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. You see, I've been calling Fallout 76's perk system not that great this whole video. And well, how would I improve it? Well, actually... I would keep it the same, but with one difference. Instead of having one star per point of strength, for example, once again, what if you could just have a full perk? Like if you had 15 strength, you could have 15 perks. I personally don't think that's actually a bad idea, because then you would be able to make more flexible builds. What if you want to make a rifleman build, but you don't want to max out perception? Or a strength build, but you don't want to max out strength, even though that's actually kind of stupid. You probably don't want to do that because strength corresponds to your damage, but still. What if you want to do pistol builds, but you didn't want to have full agility? Well, I personally think the idea that I came up with actually doesn't work too bad. Now let me explain. So, after making my own build and then forgetting about this video for about three weeks, I have finally returned, and this is what it looks like. Now these are a bit harder to see, so if the idea that I came up with were to get implemented, this would definitely need a uh, a new menu, definitely, because this perk menu is just not big enough to fit 15 perks <laughs> in strength, so I've actually never seen the perk menu do that. I did not know the perk menu looked really condensed when you had that many, because I've never in my life had 15 one-star perks. So. This is the build that I would use. This is a build that is able to pretty much 
effectively use almost every class of weapon in the game. The only weapons that I did not actually include in this build are bows, which I think is fair. Even with all this freedom, you still have to make limitations, which is fine, and I think that's what it should be about. If you want to take an even deeper look at this, you will notice that I have a lot of rifle perks, but when you come over to the other classes, I don't actually have any heavy gun or shotgun uh, armor penetration perks. It's all rifles. So once again, there's even more sacrifices that I would have to make. And this actually would make me have to do two builds. One as a melee slash unarmed specialist, and one as a ranged weapon specialist. Right there, my idea would still make you want to have more than one build because you still can't effectively use everything, but it would be more flexible. And I actually really like this idea. So there, even in the example that I came up with, you would still have an excuse to want to buy more, and in fact this might be even more of an incentive, to buy more uh, perk loadout slots in the atomic shop, because you'd actually be able to have more interesting builds instead of shotguns, pistols, rifles. You'd be able to actually have unique ones. Maybe you want to have a sniper build. Maybe you want to have just a regular non-sniper build. Maybe you want to have a... I don't know, a heavy gun slash melee build. You can't get away with that currently. You'd have to have a different build for each class of weapon. And uh, I don't like that. Which, once again, is why I came up with this system. Now of course, my system isn't perfect. It could definitely need tweaked. Like I said, as you can see here in the image, you will definitely need a better menu. But I think if this were an approach that was taken, I think the perk menu would be a lot more beginner friendly because as soon as you hit level 50, you you become cut off and you technically there get weaker after. So your enemies will still gain levels, but you will not. But in my idea, you would still be getting perks up until probably in the hundreds and you'd still be able to experiment with new perks, and if you can have more perks, it would give you more of an incentive to try new perks, because you would actually be able to still do fine even if they weren't great. So my idea could even still allow you to use more perks and make you want to use more perks. It would have you want to experiment more. Now for the highlight of the video. Now you see, this is actually a feature I would love to have implemented. But, every great salesman, or just someone who wants to sell an idea, will do more effectively if they can show that idea in action. Because no one wants to buy an idea that, well, they don't actually see working. So here's some gameplay footage that I just recorded. This footage is of me using a few different weapons. And, of course, I will commentate over it while it plays. So as you can see here, I started off with an instigating hunting rifle. Nothing special, just an instigating hunting rifle. So I pick off some damage on some enemies. And as you can see, some of the enemies are getting closer. So what I end up doing is switching to a Gauss shotgun with the executioner's effect. Now if you actually sniped and hit your target with the instigating effect, some of them might not have died, but they should have taken a nice chunk of health. Switching from a sniper to a shotgun to mop up the close range combats, you can use executioners, which does more damage when your target is past half health. So, you can take instigating, which might not kill your target in one hit, and executioners, which does more damage when your target is close to dead, and you can combine them to actually make a pretty nice combination. Now of course, personally, sniping off enemies from a distance is not something everyone wants to do. But from a casual new player perspective, it might be something you want to try. And I do like differences in gameplay every once in a while. Sometimes you can run and gun, sometimes it's nice to sit back. Everyone has a different style. So with the system, you'll be able to switch weapons on the fly depending on what they do. Maybe you want to use a rifle for outdoors combat, maybe you want to use a melee or shotgun for indoors combat. Maybe you're like me, and you do actually prefer semi-automatic weapons since they usually do more damage, even if they technically do it slower. But, 
let's be real here. They're not really the best weapons for events. And the current perk system, if you're using, let's say, a melee weapon, and Scorched Earth goes off, you're going to be sitting, waiting around for the Scorched Beast Queen Alive. Well, what if you could just have a melee weapon for when you want to use it, and a shotgun for when you want to use it, to just kill, you know, the generic enemies that spawn, but while the thing is flying around, maybe you'll want to snipe at it with a sniper rifle or a gun with longer range. Because melee people, they can't really hit the Scorch Beast Queen while it's flying around. So of course with this system, you wouldn't have to wait around during the Scorch Beast Queen or just Scorch Beast fights in general. So that is my pitch for a better perk system in Fallout 76. Let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have a better idea? Or do you like this style of content? I've never tried this before, so I'd like to know how it goes over, because honestly, this wasn't actually a bad video to make, so I actually enjoyed doing it. That sounds mean. I enjoy doing all my videos. But this one it was extra more fun because I got more of an opinion in it. It wasn't just me listing off facts that I wrote down on a piece of paper. It was me actually taking an idea, a concept, and constructing it the way I would do it. So if you want to see me go around Fallout 76 and take more um, ideas and then talk about how I would personally improve them, I would love to do a series on that. So let me know, what do you guys think? Do you like this idea? Do you not like it? Let's see what we got. So that's about it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. This was a really fun one to make. So hope you all enjoyed, and I'd like to see you guys all next time. Have a good day, evening, morning, or night, whichever one it happens to be at the time of your viewing. See you later.